Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Miller, and today we're going to be talking about decision-making respecting important care issues for persons with ALS. If you or someone you love has ALS, you probably already know that ALS is a progressive disease that affects muscle strength and movement. ALS is often referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease. It's also known as motor neuron disease, or MND. Motor neurons are specialized nerve cells that carry impulses from the brain to the muscles. The muscles move in response to these impulses. In ALS, motor neurons gradually stop functioning and die. As this happens, the muscles controlled by these neurons waste away because no movement is being stimulated. Unfortunately, there is no known cure for ALS at this time. As the disease progresses, various muscles become weaker. For most people with ALS, the respiratory muscles, which control breathing, are affected. And as the breathing muscles weaken, decisions regarding respiratory support need to be made. Breathing support is an important therapeutic intervention because it supports muscle function and it improves the length and the quality of life throughout the course of the disease. Developing a care plan that includes respiratory support is not an easy task. However, it's important for you to consider what you want in terms of both short-term and long-term treatment as your ALS progresses. Regardless of what decisions you make, rest assured that you can always change your mind regarding any treatment at any time. The first step toward developing a care plan that addresses respiratory support is to learn all you can about ALS and your respiratory support options. This video series provides an overview of the various respiratory support options available to you at different stages of the ALS disease progression. But it does not provide all the answers. Part of your ALS care team's job is to address your specific concerns and to answer your specific questions so that you can make the best possible decisions for you and your loved ones. Before we discuss the respiratory support options available to you early in the disease progression, Dr. Lisa Wolf, a pulmonologist or lung specialist, will explain how ALS impacts the respiratory system. Hello, I'm Dr. Lisa Wolf. Your respiratory system is responsible for bringing oxygen into your body and for getting carbon dioxide out of your body. This exchange of gases helps to maintain the right balance of pH, which directs many bodily processes. The diaphragm is the main respiratory muscle that contracts and relaxes to allow air into the lungs. Other muscles, such as those in the back, shoulders, neck, and the chest cavity help as well. When ALS causes the muscles that control breathing to weaken, the lung is not completely inflated and hypoventilation can occur. Hypoventilation literally means small breaths. The airways at the bases can get plugged with secretions and just fail to adequately expand. This limits oxygen delivery in and carbon dioxide removal. The more secretions you have, the more you have to fight to breathe. You are also more at risk for lung infections. Hypoventilation can lead to a variety of symptoms, such as fatigue, anxiety, waking up in the morning with a headache or a fuzzy-headed feeling, shortness of breath, especially with activity, awakening frequently during the night, bad dreams and difficulty waking up in the morning, there are several easy techniques that you can perform to address breathing discomfort in the early stages of ALS. In fact, early adoption of certain breathing exercises can help you maintain good lung function, prevent infections, and improve your quality of life. Brian Daniel, a respiratory therapist, will discuss some of the techniques used to address the respiratory symptoms many people with ALS experience early in the disease. If you're experiencing symptoms of hypoventilation, simple solutions like body positioning and energy conservation can be helpful. Body positioning includes such things as elevating the head of your bed or using a wedge with or instead of your pillow. 
this will actually help you breathe at night a lot easier. Energy conservation means using your limited energy more efficiently. Some examples include spacing out your activities so you can rest in between and sitting down to perform certain tasks. Many people with ALS find that they have more energy in the morning than later in the day. If that's true for you, you can plan your daily activities around your energy level. As Dr. Wolf mentioned, there are several exercises that can help you maximize your lung function, reduce your work of breathing, and prevent infection. These exercises can be tailored to your individual needs by a respiratory care practitioner. One exercise called breath stacking can help increase the volume of air you inhale to fully inflate your lungs to keep them more supple and active. A device used for that maneuver is the simple self-inflating resuscitation device. You'll notice here there's a mouthpiece. Uh, it has a series of one-way valves and you can actually activate the device by simply squeezing it and placing the mouthpiece in your mouth. With the mouthpiece firmly in your mouth, you can squeeze, hold, followed by another squeeze, and hold, followed by another squeeze, and hold, and then removing the mouthpiece, you would simply exhale. Another exercise called assisted coughing can help you better clear airway secretions, which keeps your lungs healthy. This can be done on your own or again with the assistance of a caregiver. When it comes to breathing exercises, the earlier you start, the better you'll be able to maximize your current lung function and maintain it for a longer period of time. However, as ALS progresses, most patients find that they need more and more breathing assistance. There are several types of equipment that you may want to consider that can help you with breathing and keeping your air passages open. These are discussed in video two of this series. For now, an ALS specialist will answer questions many people have regarding respiratory support in the early stages of ALS. I'm not experiencing any breathing problems right now, so why do I need to ask about respiratory support? Changes in respiratory status will become a primary concern as your ALS progresses. The more informed you are now, the easier it will be to make decisions later. Also, the earlier you start practicing certain breathing exercises, the more you'll be able to maximize your current lung function. What factors do I need to consider as I make decisions regarding respiratory support? Developing a respiratory care plan involves everything from your prior medical conditions, your current condition, and physical state, as well as your family situation and values. Right now, you may not feel like you need any kind of respiratory support. Later on, you will likely feel differently. The important thing right now is to learn as much as you can about the respiratory support options available to you so you and your family can make informed decisions. Well, my ALS support team helped me make decisions on my respiratory support. On his respiratory care. Respiratory care. Absolutely. Part of your ALS care team's job is to answer any questions you have regarding the symptoms you may be experiencing as well as the treatments available to address those symptoms. Bear in mind that your care team cannot make the decision for you. However, they may make recommendations for certain types of respiratory support that may increase your comfort and improve your quality and length of life. The important point to remember is, if you don't make your wishes known for how you want your treatment managed while you can still communicate, those decisions will be made for you by someone else, especially if an emergency situation occurs. Having a durable power of attorney for health care is critically important for ensuring that your treatment preferences are respected. What if I don't have an ALS care team? If you don't have an ALS care team, there are other resources you can access for information and care. For instance, there are a number of ALS organizations that provide information on their websites, including how to find ALS support groups and clinics in your area. These include the ALS Association, the Les Turner ALS Foundation, and the Forbes Norris Research and Treatment Center. Whether you have an ALS care team or not, 
the more proactive you are in seeking out resources, the better your quality of care will be. What if I start using respiratory equipment and then I decide I don't want to? Early support and intervention can help extend your life and increase your comfort, but you have the right to stop using any type of respiratory support at any time. Will respiratory support help cure my ALS? No, there is no known cure for ALS at this time. However, early use of respiratory support can help you preserve lung function, improve your quality of life, and may even help to extend your life. Are there other things that I can do to support my breathing? Staying well hydrated by drinking plenty of water and clear fluids can help to keep secretions thin and manageable. In addition, medications can be used to control secretions as well as to minimize anxiety. Maintaining good nutrition and consuming enough calories can help provide the energy needed to support your respiratory system. At all stages of ALS, it is essential that you keep your mouth clean by brushing and flossing daily. It is also important to follow the recommendations your physical or occupational therapist suggests regarding positioning or activity levels. Just as your ALS care team encourages you to exercise your body with range of motion, workouts on your arms and legs, remember your chest wall has bones and joints too that also must be stretched and kept loose to preserve lung function now and later in the disease process. Everyone's journey with ALS is different. ALS affects not only your life, but the lives of those you love and care for you. It truly is a difficult road to walk down. While developing a care plan that includes respiratory support is not an easy task, identifying how you want to manage your treatment and discussing your wishes with your loved ones and your care team is essential. As you wrestle with your options, know that you are not alone. Your care team is with you to provide additional information and resources, to answer your questions, and to help you maintain your quality of life for as long as possible. Remember also that your care plan is not set in stone. You can decide to change your mind or discontinue any treatment at any time. As long as you have a care plan in place, it's your decision. Hi, my name's Renee. My husband, Bill, was diagnosed with ALS five years ago and died just recently. Our five-year journey through ALS was an amazing journey for many reasons. One was his attitude. Shortly after he was diagnosed, he came to me and said, I've made a decision that I'm not going to live however many days I have left being miserable or making people around me miserable. So that really set a positive tone and we really tried to um, live whatever remaining time we, um, we had positively and, 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 and happily. We also attended support groups which really helped us a lot in terms of planning for the future and just deciding how we were going to um, cope with this disease. Probably out of all of that, one of the most important things um, that happened was that we made a plan. We talked about what his wishes were at end of life, and I also talked about my wishes for my own end of life. It's not as if any of us will escape making these sorts of decisions, and that's how we approached it. I'm Debbie, and my husband Jeff has been diagnosed with ALS for the past 11 years. Um, we have three young children. I was 25, my husband was 27 when we were first diagnosed. His perspective at that time was he wanted to be around as long as he could talk to others and share his story with other people. We were able to take my husband with us many different places so that he can continue to enjoy life, you know, spend time with the kids, we take him hunting, um, we take him to ball games and things of that nature that he enjoys doing. We have been able to do all these things due to a strategic plan in order to get the services that we need so that he can continue to live with us and spend time with us.